so we're here at the Bottom Line show after the show with Patrick Durkin. And uh, Patrick, thank you again for joining this Hangout after the show. That was a great hour of really um, thought-provoking information about water and uh, everything from energizing and blessing the water to some of the medical uh, information to back that up. Well, thanks, Willian. It's, it's great to be here. I love hanging out with you, and, and uh, you asked great questions. I've been interviewed a lot in the last year, and nobody um, took me through the way you did. So uh, nice job. I, I really appreciate your skill and, and uh, how you led the conversation. Well, thank you. And it looks like we've got Ann Bandini has joined us. Uh, Ann, do you have questions for Patrick with regards to water? Well, I guess the basic question is, what's the best water to drink? <laughs> Well, that is a great question. So, thank you for asking it. You know, it, it really depends on um, what your circumstances are and what you believe in. So um, do you have any – well, I'll, 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 let me try it this way. So there are a couple of specialized waters that I have consumed myself for periods of time. And there are a couple that I haven't that I would recommend for certain things. But if you're looking for um, a long-term answer that's likely to be steady and serve the majority of people, then I think the answer is structured water. And that's water with energy in it. And so um, to, to briefly explain the, the other ones, just so we, we get those named for people, if I was doing a cleanse... I would choose distilled water. And the reason I would use distilled water on a cleanse is distilled water is uh, very hungry. It's, it's been stripped of its minerals. And so it will go in and it will leach. It will grab whatever it can. And so um, distilled water is a great thing if you're trying to get toxins out of your body. Wow, that's a good, that's amazing because I just went to the nutritionist. And they found out I had parasites, and they told me to put the in water, but not distilled. <laughs> and I always drink distilled. Yeah, you know, it is so confusing out there to find reliable information about water. This is part of why this has to be a, a full-time passion for me, and something that I've just gone fully into with my life. Now, I don't know what's right for anybody else's experience, but I can tell you that I've run into opinions like that, and I've run into opposite opinions, and I've, I've just hung in the conversation until it made sense to me. That makes it, sense to me. Yeah. I, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully that's helpful for you. So distilled water, good for a really short period of time for pulling things out of your body. So this, I think, is fascinating information, uh, Patrick, because what you're telling us is, you know, different types of water are different, are good for us at different times for different reasons. That's so if we're good. doing a cleanse, you want to drink distilled water because it'll help cleanse and, and leach out whatever toxins you're trying to rid your body from. But it doesn't sound like it would be a good idea to drink distilled water 100% of the time because we do need some of the minerals that are in water. So it sounds like at other times it's better to drink alkaline water for a specific period of time. So, so can you address that issue, you know, alkaline yeah. water, distilled water versus water that has minerals, putting pinches of maybe gray sea salt and things to that effect? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I think that's, you know, we could spend a bunch of time on this, and it's it's really important conversation for people. So... Um, one of my uh, learning places, one of my teachers, was the New York State Department of Health. And they, which is a surprising source, but you know, when you look, when you look far enough, you're going to find some stuff of value all over the place. And, and what they published that was really valuable was this concept of a bone bank. And the idea is that, I, you know, I like to think about things really simply. So I've thought about, like, what am I? What, what is this body? And if, if we just vapor, if we, uh, if we dropped it into a couple of buckets and separated what it's made of, what would be left? And there'd be like a pile of minerals, and there'd be a pile of water. That's it. That's, that's what I am. 
So if that's what I am, then the mineral deposits that are there, we seem to believe culturally that it's normal as a young person to be strong and vibrant, shoulders back, you know, big frame. And then we've accepted the truth that that diminishes over time and we get smaller. Well, all that getting smaller is is a gradual eroding, a decline in the amount of minerals in the body. You know, it's just like moving sand on a beach. It's just water comes by and moves it. So my, my thought is that if so much of what I'm counting on is minerals, then I want to make sure that I'm getting a lot of them into my body. And we, um, I think, live in an age where our food supply is not the, the most uh, vibrant. It, it's not carrying the most earth to us. It's like we grow as much as we can, as fast as we can, and get that to market and call that food. And so it may be that, do you know that, that certain plants will absorb minerals into themselves that they don't need just to be carriers for us? Wow. Oh, wow. Right? They, they will, they, they're alive and they're part of this oneness that we're all a part of. They're part of consciousness. And, and plants will give us minerals. So I would suggest we're not getting enough minerals. And so I actually take a mineral supplement uh, three times a day. I take trace minerals. I, I actually just, in between our show and right now, I just grabbed a handful of, of 12 supplements and, and threw them in. And, and what that's about is I want to keep building up the mineral structure. I want to be making constant deposits. And the analogy I use here is think about cash flow and think about savings. So the bone bank concept. If I have cash flow of hydration and minerals constantly going in, then I'm replenishing this vehicle that I'm living in with what it's made of. But if I skimp on the water or I skimp on the minerals, now it has to go searching to protect itself. Our blood has a pH of 7.35. It doesn't waver. And yeah. what happens is when we give it too much acid, it if it doesn't have cash flow to meet the acid need, it will go and make a withdrawal from the, the teeth or the bones, mm -hmm. right? So that's the withdrawal from the bank that I don't want to see happening in my body. So I constantly aim to put the water and minerals in. And so in distilled water, we have no minerals. They're, they're, they're taken out. They're not there. So given that I'm made, the majority of me is water, it seems to me at least a significant portion of the minerals that I get should be coming from my water. I don't want to drink water that doesn't have minerals in it unless I'm trying to remove things from my body. So that's the story on distilled. That and makes I, a lot of sense. That's yeah. Really you know, if you think about it long enough, you can get back to simplicity, but it it uh, it takes a while. You know, there's nothing there's nothing very complicated complicated in what I'm sharing with you there. Well, you know, I had distilled in the house, so I was going to continue to drink it, even though she said not to, because there didn't seem any point. But that's what I had, so now I'm happy because you're giving me the confirmation to drink it right now, because I'm actually on a on a supervised fast, so that's good. Well, that's just the right time. That's just the right time. And the other water that people are drinking that's very similar to that is reverse osmosis water. Yeah. And I drank reverse osmosis water for eight years. What, what, okay, tell me. I, I'm not really familiar with reverse osmosis water. Can you tell us a little bit? Assume I because I really don't know anything about reverse osmosis. Yeah, remember we did the ABCDs of water filtration. Exactly. So reverse osmosis is an A... C and D filter. So it doesn't take little organisms that are alive and kill them. You need ultraviolet or chlorine to do that, or ozone. Those are the three ways to do a B filter. But in terms of like removing stuff, reverse osmosis is really great because it does the taste, really important to everybody. It does the chemicals and it does the metals. 
So it's got this really strong reputation in the marketplace as being a really good water. But I had a water fountain in my office that I fed reverse osmosis to while I was a financial advisor. And I was always pleased because nothing grew on my fountain. It never got dirty. Wow. And that's what I wanted, right? That was the desired result. But then I moved home. And actually, I've got a water fountain right there in the background under the plant. Mm -hmm. But it's turned off because when I give it living water, it gets all corroded with green stuff on it. Like it, it grows and then it needs to be cleaned and it, it, it's, there's a certain amount of service. So I think it looks good holding the plant and I don't want to do that level of service. <laughs> but what I thought about was my body as a sterile environment, like the fountain at work with the reverse osmosis, or my body more like a rainforest growing everything. And the reverse osmosis does not make that stuff grow. So reverse osmosis is removing minerals, and it's essentially providing a sterile. I think of like stainless steel sterile when I think of reverse osmosis. And while at one point in my life, when I this was before the water business, I was educating others, look, this is a great water because I took some of my reverse osmosis to my nutritionist, had him measure it. He said it's got very low dissolved solids, like seven parts per million. Basically, it's really, really clean. It's, it's almost as pure as distilled water. And so here's this guy who's he, – he walks, <laughs> walks on water from my perspective. You know, he's, he's been on the Dis Discovery <laughs> Channel. He's been on local TV. He's published six books. He's helped me heal. And he's telling me reverse osmosis is really great water. That's where the confusion comes in again, right? This is a, this is a doctor who has, you know, the, the prime minister or, 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 you know, families, royal families from European countries flying to be treated by him. But his water advice wasn't making me the healthiest, right? And it, it took a while to, to learn through that. So let's move on now to, do you have any questions about reverse osmosis and distill before I go to alkaline? No, that's good. No, it's good, but it's crystal clear that um, either distilled or reverse osmosis water, although it's perfectly clean, you do need the minerals that are in water to sustain you over time. So again, for it sounds like reverse osmosis water is good for a specific thing for a specific time period, but not to satisfy all your hydration needs. So it takes us to one of my favorite sayings is you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And this is a classic case in point where I didn't know until I didn't know. Until now I obviously know it because it's I've got a picture of, of stainless steel when I think of reverse osmosis now. Right on. Right on. Very well said. Well, well um, encapsulated there, Lillian. I, I want to make one uh, closing point before we leave the reverse osmosis because there's room in the way we just spoke about that for people to think, well, if I add minerals, am I doing okay drinking reverse osmosis? And what I want them to know is I would answer no for my preferences. You'll have to answer for yourself. And the reason why is reverse osmosis is essentially killing the energy of the water. Right? So, we, yeah, we haven't been taught to think about ourselves as these energetic beings like we – we know it like an intellectual knowing that everything's energy, but we don't know it like, well, how do I act in my daily life to be congruent with myself? And the answer to that is that you have energy in your water, and reverse osmosis is never going to provide that, just like plastic bottled water is never going to provide that. They're, they're the same in that way. So let's move on to alkaline water. So alkaline water is like a medical grade water. And it's really great for healing a particular type of illness um, according to the testimonials, right? You know, nothing other than a drug can cure, treat, or prevent a disease. And we have the FDA to thank for that. So we, we have to be careful in the way we speak about it. But there, there are uh, hordes of people who've drank alkaline water and have healed. And I'm one of them. 
So I know this really well, and, and I drank it for two years. I spent uh, not $4,000 on the most expensive machine in the industry, but uh, $8,000 because I got two of them. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I could loan one out to people who were sick. Um, and I'm going to mute you because I think a little bit of background noise is, is coming from you. And, and when you want to speak, you just have to unmute yourself. I'd love to have you um, stay in the conversation, and I'm really thankful that you're here. But I, I'm going to see if we get a little less background noise by um, clicking mute there. Okay. So you can, you can still hear us, Anne, but we can't hear you now. If you want to talk again, you'll just unmute yourself by clicking on that microphone, okay? All right. So um, thank you. So um, so the alkaline water, I had a really acidic stomach. And um, the way I think about it is I, I like to use the analogy of a seesaw. I think I got my screen too tight to put my arms out and have you really get it. But we'll, we'll do it this way. So my alkaline water see seesaw. So I'm acidic. And that this is the acid side down here. So I put alkalinity up here and it balanced me out. And I'm thinking, yes, this alkaline water is the greatest thing. I'm going to take this to humanity. It cured me. You need to have it. Everybody should have this because it worked for me. right? I, I lived in that energy for a while. And I've never known anything other than enormous success on anything I felt that passionately about. And in a year, I only sold 11 machines. Like people people wouldn't buy from me. It's like they resisted the price, they resisted the story. I got to a C-level executive at a Fortune 500 company for putting it into his cafeteria. I mean, I really was going somewhere. I met with deans of colleges, superintendents of school systems. I really went after it, and I, and I couldn't get them to buy. And I was like, I don't get it. Like, I was asking water. Like, okay, water, I don't get it. Why isn't this working? Why won't people buy alkaline water? The answer and, was? And the answer was that alkaline water is a medical grade water that will even the seesaw, like it did for my friend who had um, cancer and was likely to die within six months four years ago, and she's still alive. So it did an amazing thing for Kim. I mean, Kim's still on this planet. I think because of alkaline water, and her doctor thinks that too. But once you even a seesaw out, if you leave the thing there that evens you out, it'll go the other way. That's how seesaws work. And so if I kept drinking alkaline water, I would start to become alkaline, not just balancing acidity. And I ran into a nutritionist who does live blood cell analysis. Now her opinion on this is strong, and I don't want to alarm anybody, but I'm just I'm saying it's strong before I share it, and it's one person's opinion. But she looks at people's blood cells, and she looks at nutrition, and her opinion is if you're drinking alkaline water for more than a few months to balance acidity, you are running the risk of causing death to your body. Just from just from being over alkaline, and the 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 so she, that's her opinion. The the important part to get is that it's a seesaw, and if you go too far toward alkaline, the consequence is much more serious than if you go too far toward acidic. Like a huge no, number of people in our population right now are living too acidic, but they're not dying from that; they're suffering from it. Right? They have various aches, pains, and, and um, diseases that are related to a systemic problem. Mm -hmm. so, so my conclusion on alkaline water is that it's a medical grade water. It has strong, well-deserved proponents who are authentically sharing from their truth, telling you to drink it because they've been healed by it and that I would not and do not drink it on a long-term basis. In fact, um, one of my previous customers just asked me if uh, I can find a buyer for his used machine. So if anybody wants a used alkaline water machine, I happen to be in touch with one right now, and I'd be happy to help. Um, but I, it, it's only for 
a temporary basis. So yeah, so the alkaline water really is for a season, just like the distilled water. So I think making that distinction um, uh, known to the public, so that the average person knows that just as we have different flavors of sodas, we have different flavors of juices. That the truth is that water is no different, and there are different waters for different seasons and reasons in your life, whether you're detoxifying, whether you're trying to balance acidity in your body, and just knowing the right type of water for the season and the reason that you're, that you're addressing at this time is important to be aware of. And then there is water that you can drink all the time. That's right. And so, uh, so uh, I've just finished my water bottle, so I'd like to uh, prompt us to have a little demonstration. So, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to tilt my screen so um, you're not gonna. He's awesome. Lillian's got her bottle that she's holding up. I switched my bottle, and because of your influence, and you're telling me about um, not just Dr. Emoto, but if you, I don't know if you could see on camera here, but I wrote love. Nice. <laughs> love on my bottle, and I I happen to be a Christian, so I if, when I poured it in, I said in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless this with love. I put my, uh, what is it, my cell food, a few drops of that, and a tablespoon of chlorophyll, and then I swirled it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's your influence, Patrick. <laughs> That's awesome. And for people that know that don't know the background of our conversation, if you're wondering about water bottles and what my opinion is, the most important thing is to get a bottle that you love. Mm -hmm. So um, that can be a, a stainless steel, like I use most of the time. We actually have recently come into some um, blue Myron glass uh, bottles and I'm going to start selling them. Um, the ones that I had people literally bought right out of my hands um, and so um, I just need to revisit with that conversation. I like glass because it doesn't impart any taste to the water. I've resisted glass until now because my kids are always grabbing my bottles and my bottles have a lot of dents on them and given their dance, I figured that would be broken glass. But the most important part is, I, I'm not a fan of plastic, but if you choose that for yourself, what, whatever you choose, plastic, stainless, glass, it's that you love it and that you want to drink water out of it. So now, um, back to our demonstration. My, my bottle's empty, and I want people to see how I um, function with water throughout my day. So... Um, this is my bottle, and I think you can see that um, on the desk now. And this is a uh, portable water structuring device. We pour water in through the funnel. It comes out the uh, pointy end. There are spheres inside that allow the water to spin in an infinity sign. How interesting that the infinity shape would be at the heart of energizing anything, especially water. And what I do when I'm working here, I work at home, and I don't want to go to the um, to the sink every time I um, um, I don't want to go to the sink every time I need more water. And so what I do is I keep a one gallon container like this near my desk, and I actually because I have these beautiful plants around me, I now not only have one of these around, but I keep two of them filled throughout my day and I just you know grab them when they get to about three quarters empty and I go fill them up and um, so you you're gonna be able to see how easy it is to structure water just like that so I just ah! <laughs> I just um, the only reason that happened is because we're on air. Yes. Because God wanted you to laugh out loud because it oxygenates you and it makes you feel good. <laughs> Thank you very much, my dear. I, uh, I have a sink unit in the kitchen, and so I don't ordinarily have to pour from my one-gallon container through my portable device. You know, usually you just hold it underneath the faucet. And so filling, filling from the one-gallon container and paying attention to my uh, screen and everything, I just, you know, poured a little water in my lap. It's all, it's all good. So you now I have some water. <laughs> That's funny. Anne, do you have a question? 
<laughs> oh. And um, to hear you, to hear you, there's a little red um, mark on your screen, and if you just click that, it'll it'll un. It'll un there you go. You're in, you're on. Uh, yes, it's been very informative. I've enjoyed it. It's just a refresher of you know the, the knowledge, and I'm sure some of this I've heard before, but not exactly. So it's uh, been a blessing. Yeah. So this is your business now, water. This is this is my business now. These are our um, structuring devices. This is our portable unit. It costs three hundred ninety nine dollars, and then we have um, three units that are this size. And they're exactly the same from here to here, but they change on the ends. Mm -hmm. This one would hook onto a garden. Another one, um, like this, will go under your sink. So it's okay. got the hoses with it, but you'll see it's the same unit. It just wow. has different fittings. Textures. And then there's a, a um, shower one, and those three are each $499. And then we have a whole house unit. And the whole house unit looks like this. It is the easiest thing to install ever. The plumber comes, cuts the pipe, takes this little piece and puts it on the end, puts the other one on the other end, and then takes this unit and screws it in the middle. Wow. It, take, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes. And um, you know what's inside is just spheres. So think about this for a minute. We're used to filters that have all these replacement parts and maintenance costs and are expensive over time. The structuring device, the water just passes straight through it. And it can works. pass through forever. So there's no maintenance costs. There's no replacement parts. So if you buy a whole house unit for $1,499, that's it. You're done for life. It has a lifetime warranty on the product. And it's even easy if you move to uh, simply put the piece of pipe back in, or you can buy a blank unit from us, and you just screw it and, and put the blank unit in its place and take the unit with you. So um, the devices are really inexpensive. You know, there's such a massive hidden cost in many ways. Um, with regard to the way we distribute and consume water. And um, people are just so unaware when they plunk down $1, $2, $3, $4 for a bottle of water, what that ends up being at the end of a year. But for the average family of four, it's $1,000. And collectively, just in the United States, we're spending $21 billion a year just on plastic water bottles. And so if you go back to my, my mission to provide a compelling alternative to plastic water bottles, I wanted to provide something that was so good that when people got it, they would never go back from it. And where people experience the difference with this is when you feel the energy of this water in your body, when you feel hydration, you're not willing to, to trade that for anything. Like it just feels too good. And then when it's also incredibly affordable as a one-time purchase and lasts forever, we really, we've really got something here. So, um, so, and I would argue that the cost that you just quoted is even far, far greater because you're, you're, you're quantifying it in terms of the water costs and water bottles. But the reality is, it's costing people quality of life. It's costing them health. It's probably costing them sick days at work. It's probably costing them better positive feelings. How do you put a price tag on that? Well, we, we put a price tag of $17 trillion on our healthcare system in the United States annually right now. And if, if Tim Vest from um, Active Life Systems is right, if 85% of that could go away, well, you're talking about, I don't know, what's that, $13 trillion? A but, lot. But more to the spirit of your conversation, we're talking about um, health, joy, and vitality. We're talking about feeling well. You know, the difference between um, Patrick Durkin, age 31, at the bottom of the stairs with my two-year-old daughter on my hip with knee pain and thinking, Am I going to make it up these stairs? 
Am I going to wince in pain so badly that my daughter is going to wonder what's the matter with her daddy? That's where I was at 31. And then, and then you fast forward, you know, 13 years, and I'm on the trampoline, bouncing around with my kids like a monkey, and you know, doing the things that I want to do that, that are an expression of my joy and vitality. What's the price for that? And that, that's everything. You know, it's it's literally everything. Wow. Uh, I um I value because of my experience, I value my health over over everything. Over everything. And mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people will tell you that they put their children first. And I'll I'll tell my children and I'll tell you, I put my health first mm -hmm. because I was not the father that I want to be when I didn't have my health. And if I take care of my health first, then I'm able to take care of my children at a much higher quality. So if I need to, you know, have disciplined habits and take care of things while my kids are here, then that's what needs to happen. Well, uh, and by you're doing that, you're actually putting your kids first because you're giving your kids a better daddy, a better version of, the, of you to them. And in essence, you're modeling for them what they need to do as well so that they can be the best them that they share with not only their children but with the world. So, um, yeah, it 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 it's a com it's actually a commitment to all of us, right? Like Patrick Patrick Durkin, the Waterman, doesn't get to exist with health and vitality if he doesn't take care of his own health and vitality. Yeah, and you know, and so sometimes you know, I don't I don't set an alarm clock. I don't do morning meetings now. Because what's happened in the last few months is new for me, is I've started sleeping nine and ten hours a night, which is a shock to me. I always thought like seven and a half was enough, and really seven and a half is enough if I'm okay with adrenal fatigue. Seven and a half is enough if I'm okay with um, running myself down. But I keep wanting to become more and more like water, right? I. I see, like, I just watch its properties and I observe it and I want to be like it. And, and water doesn't force. Water persists. Water's steady. It's flowing. It's easy. And so for me, setting an alarm is not aligned with that. So um, I, I, um, I recently removed the uh, EMF and other, other energy that was in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I moved it down to my office, which is, a, I think, a more appropriate place for it, and right next to a salt lamp. And right after I did that, I slept till 11 o'clock one morning. Uh -huh. I, thought, I thought only teenagers could do that. You know, I went to bed at like midnight. Yeah, 11 hours. I was like, I didn't think I would ever sleep past 7 or 7.30 again. And so, you know, becoming congruent with what I represent in the world means relieving my adrenal fatigue. It means going going easy on me and living the life that I'm really talking about. So, you know, I still have stress just like anybody else, but um, more and more I'm finding these behaviors that I think as I've shifted my internal world, my external world has to mirror it, mm -hmm. right? And so I've shifted my internal world with water. I've changed my very composition, and, and so, so, you know, it has to be that I change on the outside, right? And I think that's a very, uh, very good point, and I think for, for myself, what I'm hearing is that um, we really need to pay attention to our bodies and honor, you know, when our body talks to us, whispers to us, or screams to us in some cases, because if we ignore the whispers and the talk, it eventually will scream to us and if we still don't listen to the scream uh, you'll end up flat on your back in an emergency room with a doctor looming over you and you're going okay now now your calendar is cleared obviously and the only thing you're gonna think about is how did I get myself here and of course hindsight's 2020 and so we of course we want to avoid that but paying attention to your body when it does need to rest and when you do need to you know slow things down and live as you said, in more integrity and in congruency with what that which you truly, truly, truly want. 
Yeah, absolutely, Lillian. I have not had a cold since I left the financial industry. I have not had the flu. No, no one day in the winter where I had a fever or anything. Not not a single day since I left. And uh, I'm just I'm used to taking care of my body now at a level that is beyond panic, right? You know, my last day of working as a financial advisor ended in the emergency room. That was panic, and um, that was stress. And That's fortunately, my body screaming at you. Yeah, it was my body screaming. I, I let the whispers get pretty loud, and um, and so now I've learned um, what it what it is to start overriding my body, and I will um, grab my yoga bolster and go lay down on the hard floor right in front of my wood stove and take a nap. You know, right right in the middle of the workday. I don't want to sleep for hours. I just my body's saying I'm tired. My mind is not as clear as usual. I just go into the other room and take a nap yeah. and come back and, and do what I want to do. Wow. Well I think on that note, unless we have Anne, would you do you have any questions or I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think those do what you want to do and recognize that water. We can keep it simple and recognize what it is and what it isn't. And Patrick, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your experience with us. This has been a great, great hangout. And I hope we can do this again sometime later in 2014, all right? That that sounds great, Lillian. It would be my pleasure. And and uh, Anne, thanks for coming on and and bringing your interest and your questions. And um, it's just yeah. wonderful to talk with you. I'm so thankful to be able to share my passion. Thank you. All right. Blessings to you, my friend. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.